Let's look at 2.3 and finish off question two. On Annex to A, when as soon as you see that, you go and open it up. There's Annex to A. Make sure that you have it. Is a roadmap, an area, an area information directing the conference attendees to Pretoria Hotel. Use Annex to A to answer the questions that follow. State the general direction of Atterbury Road off ramp from the Fountains Circle. Okay. So there's Atterbury Road, Atterbury Road off ramp. So that's where we're going from. Where did it say? From Fountain Circle. Here's Fountain Circle. Okay, that's north. Okay, that's quite important. So north, east, south, west. Remember, I said that we go in clockwise. So it's kind of in the middle there. Remember, so it's gonna we're gonna use south and east. Remember that we always use our dominant cardinal point, which is either north or south, and we say that first, and then our non-dominant after that. So in this case, it'll be south east. Okay. Because we're standing here, and what's the direction going there? South east. Okay. So if you do geography, these sort of things generally are quite easy for you. If you don't, uh don't stress, right? The biggest thing is that you just remember that. You need to firstly see where north is on the map. Okay, so do you see that's where I went? I went straight to where north was. And then put in your clockwise direction, figure out where you're standing, figure out where you're going, and then it's pretty easy from there. Then it says explain. There's a lot of explain questions in this paper. It's quite interesting. So something to note is that you need to know your definitions, hey? Because remember, we've almost had, I think it's almost 12 marks now, which is almost 10% of just explaining terms. So make sure that you're on top of your terms. Explain the phrase, map is not drawn to scale. Okay, map is not drawn to scale. There's many ways of explaining this. I would just say there's no relationship between the distances on the map and the corresponding distance on the ground. Okay, so there's no relationship between the representation on the map and the real world. That's pretty much what we're saying. Okay, so let's just write that out. 2.3.2. You say there is no relationship, okay, no relationship between distances on map, on map, and real life distances on the ground. Okay, that's what it means by not drawn to scale. Basically means you can't trust the map to accurately give you an indication of what's happening on the ground. But it's still useful, right? So it can give you kind of just a general drawing or indication. Okay, complete the sentence. Proto Hotel is at the corner of something and something street. Okay, well, this was a bit tricky when I was looking at this beforehand. I was kind of like, what's going on? Because I couldn't find Proto Hotel. But up here, it says Proto Hotel 193. So we just go find 193, okay? Now, that was a bit tricky for me originally, but... What it wants you to do is it wants you to use the complete set of information that you have. So make sure that you also read the titles and that sort of thing. And um, of course, your key in answering your questions. So it's at the corner of Albert and Clough. Okay, Albert and Clough Street. So let's just do what they asked us to do. So we're completing the sentence. So we're going to say here, Albert, Albert and Clough Street. And then we move on. Okay, we do not waste time. It says, state the probability of having a traffic circle at Brooklyn, of having a traffic light at Brooklyn Circle. Now, when you see that, when you just read it, we haven't even looked at the map. You don't have traffic lights at um, circles, okay? We know that. So the probability is probably going to be zero, but let's just go see. So this circle here, it's literally one of those ones where people flow around the circle. There's never a traffic light. You just go around the circle yielding to your right. Okay. So what we're going to say here, 2.3.4, uh, we just say it's zero. Okay. There's no probability. We do not put traffic lights at circles. Okay. That's a little bit of common sense. Let's continue. Give one reason why. So we're over here. Give one reason why some streets are numbered from one to seven. So... 
originally when I saw this, I was like, it's a bit weird. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's just different roads, right? It's different routes to get to the hotel. So it's basically saying, take this route if you're coming from that direction, this route if you're coming from that direction. So it's just what we, we can just say, different routes that lead to the hotel. Okay, different routes, different routes, different routes um, leading to the hotel, okay? Um, and that's what the numbers represent, okay? That's the reason. Why do we have numbers? It represents different routes. Let's, oh, we'll keep putting, punching holes. Okay, let's go to the last question of this video. A little bit of a longer one, four marks, but that's okay. A receptionist at the Pretoria Hotel, so we're over here, has to report for work at 5.30 in the morning. Goodness. She takes 10 minutes to walk from her home to the taxi, to board a taxi. She leaves home at this time. She then rides in the taxi for 20 minutes and then she walks five minutes from the taxi stop to the hotel. Verify whether or not the receptionist will get to work on time. Okay, so let's get this right. So she leaves home at this time. Okay, then we're going to plus 10 minutes. So she's going to then be 5.05. That's just her walk to the taxi. Okay, then we're going to add 20 minutes because that's her taxi ride. So we're going to be sitting at 5.25. Okay, that's her taxi ride, because remember, it's 10 minutes walk to the taxi stop, 20 minutes in the taxi, and then we're going to add five minutes for her walk from the taxi stop. Okay, it's all from the question. 10 minutes, right, 20 minutes, and then five minutes. This is the last five minutes. That's her walk to the hotel. So she'll be there at 5.30. Okay, and it said that she needs to be there at 5.30. So we have to verify whether or not she'll get to work on time. So with these questions, what's very important is that you say, did she get there on time or not? So then you say, therefore, she will arrive on time. Okay, remember there's a mark allocated to that conclusion. Your conclusions count for nothing if you don't put some form of calculation, but it's very important that at the end of your calculation, you give a conclusion. You kind of sign off the question and then you can move on. Okay, let's move on to question three.